never a feeling uh, that that wasn't a close 24-point win. Um, it, they, uh, there's a method why we did that, but I just, when you watch, Hillsdale doesn't have a team. Hillsdale has a program, and it, it's what we try to do as well. You try and get the right kids, they, they play a great system, they're there for, for quite a bit of time, and they just get better and better and better. Watching Kyle Cooper over four years, he's, he's become a really, really good player who can play in a lot of Division One places. So being a coach of LeMoyne for nine years, I hope that people would say we ran a program like Hillsdale has done. So it was great for our guys to have to guard really smart players that could all shoot, have a system, and learn from them. So we'll take it, but like I said, that felt like a very close, nip and tuck, 24-point win. Chris, why don't you start off? Did you say you're disappointed defensively, or you just No, 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 no. This is what we have to do. We have to learn. And, and we're, we're still trying to find out who we are defensively, what are our patterns of switching, and they expose that a lot today. But you've got to, you got to play people like we saw it is with our scout team, and our scout team practices Hillsdale for 20 minutes. They've been, some of us have been practicing four years. So it's going to expose things that they see and then they can get better at. Uh, frankly, there's some things you can't stop. You just got to hope they miss because the action is so good. I'll just talk about how you responded after the slow starter. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, nothing surprises me in this game. So uh, I, I think if they had hit another three, not 13 to two, I might use the timeout. But timeout sitting there at the 16 minute mark, just make a basket somewhere along here and make it a six point game or four point game and, and, and move back in. So uh, I, the kids came out and I, we upped our pressure because they were just getting too clean of looks at their passing game. And then and, uh, 23, we had no sky report on because he redshirted last year. Uh, we, fit, we changed his gap from, a, from our, sort of a regular gap to an overplaying a little bit. Over here in the front, Steve. When you raise a banner and you end up rings, what, what do you hope, what incentive do you hope that is for your team to have a similar type of uh, ceremony next year? Uh, I, I, that was the only thing I mentioned to all the guys I gave out to the rings. I mean, I, I talked a little bit to the freshmen, but to, you know, the ones that we gave the rings out to that are currently on the team, I said, let's do this again. Right, that's so important that we have this vision that we're going to compete for championships. Uh, at the same time, the other guys, we said, I want you guys to sit back, the freshmen, look at what just happened, right, and know that's, that's what we're trying to do every day at the University of Michigan. Uh, I counted 18 banners, and there's guys on that group right there that I have a place of three of them. And so that's really important uh, that we understand that if you stay together, that what, what we do does work. As long as you stay together. And just what were your thoughts on Karras? Uh, the nine assists and zero turnovers. I mean, that's just, this is something that you can see. We got the ball in his hands a lot. Uh, and he could see the floor. He's very unselfish. Uh, that was really a good performance. Go with Noah. Um, it's a stretch to start the season three games in six days. I guess you play again Monday. Yeah. Is this going to be sort of a test of your depth? And three guys play 30 minutes. Yeah. Minutes. Yeah, there was, you know, my guys were going early and saying, let's give guys rest. And I, I, I think with the TV timeouts and the type of condition we're in, uh, we, could, we could do 30 minutes. But I, um, uh, Bucknell will be a very similar team, probably bigger, stronger, more talented. Uh, but uh, it can't be a concern. I know when we practice for two, two or three days in a row, we practice really hard. So hopefully they're in, in game shape from all the practices they see. But uh, tomorrow will not be a two-hour knockdown drag out bad practice. Brendan, without much you want to get the freshmen up to speed and things like that, how do you balance between you know trying to get them in as involved as possible and then just saying like okay the big three you got to take over now because we need to we need to win the game. Yeah, if you look, I think the freshmen it's just like you're looking at the film afterwards and, and they'll to see it and then you're trying to work with them individually. While that's the balance I'm, I'm, I'm not struggling with, that, that is the puzzle of don't lose sight of the really, the really good players there as you develop the young kids. You have to continue to keep Karras and Zach and, and Spike and Derek so much um, reinforcement and individual development while you're also trying to get the other guys just to land on two feet sometimes and be, keep those strong into the lane. So uh, that's a balance that's difficult for us. Is there could there be a concern about uh, guys starting to maybe watch them too much at times? Is that something that 
that you would address? Yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as the other guys, the other guys just yeah, those. I mean, we, we, we'll find out real soon. I mean, people will tell you, once your stuff's out of the sky report and the film does start taking things away. Now, we have to integrate more and more. Like Cam is learning more and more what he needs to do to, to help us more. You know, DJ, Ricky, their mark is right in that category, right? So, um, I, there's no concern there, but that's part, that's the, expect, the expectation is not everybody's going to come in here and play like a junior or even a sophomore. In the middle with Matt. It seemed like uh, you guys had those few steals consecutively in the first half. Did you identify something that they were doing? At no, no, we just uh, just up the pressure. Just put more pressure on the ball, get the guy so he's got to pivot a little bit more, and then run through, get in some passing lanes. And that was, that was, a, that was a difference probably to let us get away, or that would have could have been a you know eight to ten point game. It let like, us that separation at halftime. Over to Nick on your right, John. When you guys play uh, Spike and Derek at the same time, is that sort of like it was a couple years ago when you're trying to get the ball pressure off of the point guard, or is that so Derek can you be more aggressive to score? I, What's I, I, want to accomplish I think neither. I think we were just trying to get as much experience on the floor as we could, and even though we're we're not tiny, we're six feet five eleven at that point, um, and it did give some. Uh, matchup problems a couple of times. We're just trying to be a so, you know, if you look at our team uh, and, and with the way the starting lineup is, you know, 40% of it is playing in their first game. That's almost half the team. So anytime we can get Spike in there with him, we just up that to 60%. So that's sort of the, the reason that we're doing that. And they're both good players, too. So that's some, is that something we'll see a lot of? Yeah, I think you'll see it more. Yeah. I think, and, and that's something we got to, we have to work because people will look at that size and, and try to take advantage of the lack of size. Simon? Coach, you mentioned uh, Kyle Cooper. He said that you talked to him a little while he was in high school. Was it nice to see him, you know, obviously not coming here, but to be thriving in the program, the teams he was, he was with? You know? Right, and you know, he, they had such a good player last year. I mean, Toledo last year, I, I think, uh, started out like incredible, and their only close game was to Hillsdale. And, uh, and they had a bet, they had, they had more experience last year. You know, Kyle's a really good player, and that's that's uh, college basketball in the smaller in the, the, the Division Two, Division Three. Uh, you mentioned Duncan Robinson. Well, you you don't know him like I know. After four years of playing small college basketball, how good they get to be, and they play for so many of the good reasons. So he was he was impressive to me. My hat goes off to him. I'll swing back over to Brad. Uh, during the ceremony, Harris and Albert were referred to as. Captain, is that official? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we did, we make a big deal of that in our locker room, but we don't make a big deal of it outside the locker room. Um, and so, yeah, they, they will be captains all year long. Those two, we had a team vote, which was uh, practically unanimous, and, and the coaching staff, which was unanimous too. So we're really uh, excited about those two guys leading us in the future. Can you just you know speak to each? Different leadership qualities. Yeah, yeah, they have one's outspoken. Yeah, and the other one are holler guys now, and that's something that we're teaching them. And we really, we really pride ourselves in teaching that characteristic, but it's not as natural to some. And so uh, there's there's little things that, as the year goes on, uh, that we'll say, Spike, this is what you could have done at that time, you know. Or uh, as the freshman's now, all right, you need to go and take him to take him to dinner right now. You know, those are the type of things that I think we have to coach up with more. That was might have been more natural to some people. Uh, but they're, they're, but I tell you what, they're loyal and they're in it for all the right reasons. And we have no doubt they're going to make the right decisions. They just got to make them probably more of them. Over here on the left with Daniel. Uh, Derek said post game that when Spike and him are on the court at the same time, he's more aggressive, trying to shoot more. That's something you want him to really only do once Spike's on the court. How does that? How do you think no. that's going to affect him when he? Not but with both of them, I want them to look at the basket more. I, you know, I want Spike to shoot more from the outside. Uh, but Derek, either way, you know, when when uh, when, when Trey Burke was our point guard and Darius Morris, they had a scoring. They were they were uh, uh, scorers who could pass, right? And uh, they were very willing passers. But they were looking at the basket. So we want Derek to look at the basket much more. Where Spike's probably more of a passer who can score or can shoot. Uh, Derek said that's, that's the mentality we want from him. We'll take two more. We'll go with Adam and Mark. Um, how did the maze rage unveiling the banner come about? I, I, our administ our, our uh, staff just sort of got together and thought that, you know, these, 
They've waited out in the cold. They're in every game. Today they're in the upper bleachers for the uh, Division II Saturday afternoon game in football season. And we value our relationship with them so, so much, and we wanted to make sure they knew they were part of this. Mark, Mark Barrett and the aggressive mentality, it seems like in the open court that he was pushing it for himself almost, as opposed to last year he was pushing it for other people. Is that part of the yeah, change? Yeah, no, it, it, I mean, it's, it's the part, more of a part of his migration here as a player maturation as a player and our, our particular need. He's got quickness, he can shoot, uh, he can get to the basket. Well, let's not set up others when you can get your own, but at the same time, if when they collapse and you engage two people, now look for the open man. But if you're one-on-one -on -one with leverage, go. Coach Milan, thank you. Okay, thanks everyone.